So I'm going to check to see if my top head is in tune. And I'll start right here. a mess. I can hear even right here. I can hear the difference between those two. So uh, let me go back to initially hitting it again. And I have to decide once again if I want the pitch higher, lower, or similar to what it is. And I'm almost thinking when I hit it with the snares off, like that. I like my snares turned off to sound almost like a timbali type of a sound, like a Latin drum. And uh, I, so at this point, I'm going to decide that I want to go with a little bit of a higher pitch. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go around again and I'll listen for the high pitches. high ones be here. So this will be my starting point. You hear that? I'll show you that again. Even a little higher. Now, you may have also seen somewhere on a video or maybe your teacher showed you how to tune. I've seen this method as well, where you put your finger in the middle of the drum to dampen the sound of the drum. I think it's good. It's a really good way to do it, but you have to be consistent. The main reason why is because if I apply different pressure to my finger, watch what happens. So sometimes what I see is guys going around and then as they're getting here, they're putting more pressure on the drum, which is actually changing the pitch of the actual skin. And I feel that because I play drums wide open anyways with very little muffling if possible, I want it to be, I want to be able to tune it wide open as well. It also just gets your ears trained really, really well. So one more time. Hit test one more time. Okay, it's starting to sound like a drum. Okay? So this time I want to hit it with the strainer off to see what the sound of the actual drum sounds like, minus the snare wires. So I'm actually liking the sound of that, okay? So let me see what happens when I turn the snare strainer back on. There's still something a little funny, but if you remember what I mentioned earlier, we have this little turny devicey knob thing on our strainer, which actually adjusts the, the uh, snare wires to the bottom head. Notice how if I start to go too tight, I start to get a really nasty overtone. Listen to this again. So 
So you hear that? Now I'm going to loosen the snare strainer, see what, I, see what result I get here. I'm going to loosen it even just a little more, see what happens. All right. So I'm getting into that range where I'm starting to get happy with this, but remember, there's no muffling at all on this drum. So we have some options at this point, because as opposed to spending the next three and a half hours trying to get rid of that ring tuning-wise, this is where we can use muffling such as um, moon gel or drum gum or an O-ring, anything like that. Let's first of all try with the O-ring, see how that sounds. Okay, so here's the O-ring. Now if you hear that, you'll notice it was pretty muffled, okay? To me, that's the extreme. Let's take a piece of moon gel. Drum gum is the same stuff, same idea. Put that on the drum. Let me give this a, a hit. I like that, you know. I can even mess around with the, with the moon gel a little bit. I can put half of it on the drum. Maybe give me a little bit of that ring. Here we go. If I decide I don't like the ring, put the entire muffling on the drum. I'm liking this. Let's hear how this snare now sounds. So I'm definitely very happy with the sound of this now. This drum now sounds like an $800 snare drum. But keep in mind, you can also get a $30 snare drum sounding like an $800 snare drum if you play your cards right. Experiment with all the things I talked about. New heads, good muffling, good tuning technique. You'll be surprised at what you can get with any drum.